That was a, this, this was the rain on. before the storm. We were going to get rain anyway. Okay. So, yeah. morning. Good morning. Yeah. So we moved and we, fin we finished all of the Old Testament and we're moving into the New Testament. Um, which I think is pretty exciting. We're moving Matthew this week. Next week, if you finish up reading on Matthew um, 22 through 28, and then read all of Mark. And that should bring us up to, you know, staying along the same timeline. Okay? So it's finish up Matthew and all of Mark. Is this week's readings. And I did send out videos of that in case you want to do it as you're driving. Okay. So, dear Heavenly Father, help us to see you in all that we do. Help us to see you in your word. Guide us to your truth. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Do you really know Jesus and delight in the kingdom of heaven? So this is focusing on the early stages of Matthew, but also <coughs> reaching the point of the parable of the sowers. And what is the difference? Do you, how do you know you really are saved? What kind of soil are you reading? Give ear, humble my people, to the law, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. Psalm 78, 1 3. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory. Timothy, 1 Timothy 3 through 6. Yeah. So as we begin the New Testament, we study this week from the Gospel of Matthew. Now in order to fully understand, I want to focus on why Matthew's Gospel and why it's different in some ways than the other. Each one has a major theme. To do so, we'll first focus at the what Matthew's gospel is speaking to and for whom his gospel was intended. He explains the mystery of the kingdom of heaven, specifically the church age. And furthermore, as we come to the parables of the kingdom found in Matthew 13, we are given the truth of the gospel. Therein is a glimpse into this mystery and statements as to the mystery of the absolute security of salvation. Therefore, my prayer is, by the time we complete this lesson, you will be certain of the truth of the kingdom and how to know with certainty that you are saved. He moves then to, after <clears throat> chapter 13, he moves then to explain the blindness of the people who will never see as they desire the darkness. <clears throat> Their faith is superficial or they are too concerned with the things of this world. The kingdom of the king of the kingdom arrived on earth. Matthew presented Jesus as the king. This he did very masterfully. He began in chapter 1 presenting the genealogy of Jesus Christ from Abraham to Joseph his stepfather. He was in the perfect lineage of King David, just as God had foretold. Furthermore, Mary was in the line of David. Yet, as God also said, the line of Jaconius, the son of Josiah, was corrupted, the corrupted line from the king of David came through the stepfather, so therefore was not part of the blood of Jesus. Because he had said in the Old Testament that Jacob none of Joe Canaius would bribe. So he kind of broke off the line, but he didn't. He stepped over it and brought Jesus <coughs> as the um, <coughs> stepson to Joseph, but the true son of God himself. 
for the um, yet as okay. God was the father of Jesus. However, Jesus was the son of David, still with the right as the king of all the people of Israel. He legitimately could and will set up the final kingdom. So Matthew was writing mostly to the Hebrew nation, to the Jewish people in his approach. So he was saying, this is your king. <coughs> he did come. <coughs> and all of this is meticulously laid out by Matthew. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David unto the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. And from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. Matthew 1, 17. Yeah, so God is very much follows timelines in everything that he does. So we have to know that his timeline is perfect. Even when we look around us and go, <gasps> What is your timeline? Then in Matthew 2, we are presented with the wise men. So see, he's laying the case for him being the king first. And so in chapter 1, he lays it out by genealogy. In chapter 2, he presented the wise men who, after years of study, came to bow before the newborn king. When they saw the star, they knew it was time. And so they came. They had concluded that he was king, for they had seen the star they had been waiting for. In their travel to the newborn king, they stopped in Jerusalem to inquire as to where he was to have been born, according to scripture. The wise men in the court of King Herod told them Bethlehem. Furthermore, after they visited, Joseph fled to Egypt to protect Jesus as he was warned Herod saw his death. That also fulfilled Old Testament scripture that he would bring him out of Egypt. And that was the scripture uh, regarding Jesus as king. And then there was further proof of Jesus as king as we move to Matthew 3. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare you the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Matthew 3, 1 through 3. Yeah. Furthermore, when Jesus came to John the Baptist, we are told, Then comes Jesus from Galilee to Jordan, unto John the Baptist, unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou unto me? And Jesus answered him, Answered, said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it come, becometh us to fulfill all the righteousness. Then he suffered him and Jesus when he was baptized, and went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And in lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Matthew 3, 13 through 17. Yeah. So after this, so see, he's laying the case step by step, chapter by chapter, Matthew's telling them, this is how you know he is the king. He is the long-awaited Messiah. He is the king. So after this, Jesus was led then into the wilderness to be a tempted by Satan. However, he did not succumb to any of the temptations presented him. Then he began to call his apostles, starting his ministry, preaching the kingdom of heaven <coughs> is at hand. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew 4, 17. So what did he mean? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Throughout his ministry, he taught repentance for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, just as John the Baptist had taught. Could he have established the kingdom they wanted him to right then? Perhaps he could have. He could do anything he wanted. But there was this key element, the repentance of the heart. And many came only because they wanted what they believed he could give them but did not want to worship him. 
Need many followers are just that. The Old Testament had been clear that without the shedding of blood, there was no remission for sin. Isaiah had clearly foretold of the suffering servant who would shed his blood in their place, the innocent for the guilty. Yet his ministry would be rejected by the elite of Israel and their judges. He would be rejected. Therefore, the final kingdom would have to be delayed until some future date when all of Israel would repent. That will be when Jesus returns to earth in the second coming to set up his kingdom. At that time, all of Israel will have come to repentance and accept him. However, in the interim is set up the church age, often referred to as the mystery of the kingdom. <clears throat> and that's why Paul keeps saying, and the mystery was brought to us, and the mystery is now known. Okay. This would be the time span we are in until all is ready for the rapture, followed by the final cleansing of Israel during the tribulation. And God, God never forsook his chosen people and will fulfill all he has promised. He will return at a time when all of Israel will repent at that point. Proving his kingship then through teaching and miracles, <coughs> then Matthew moves in chapters five through seven of Jesus preaches with knowledge and authority beyond that which could be earthly. Therefore, again, pointing to him as king and as God's son. Here he teaches with such authority that only the son of God could have. He was obviously the king of kings, the awaited Messiah. Then there were the miracles outlined from Matthew 8 to 10. So Matthew has done a very step-by-step -step process saying, okay, I'm presenting to you your king. This is how come I know, and this is how you should know he is king. Despite all this, Jesus was rejected by the majority and by the leaders of the synagogue. Jesus rebuked even the cities for their disbelief. And this is what comes up over the next uh, 11 and 12 is where they were. he was denied <coughs> multiple times. Then he began to represent the city in which most of his miracles, miracles were done begin because because the dead died or dead did not repent repent to woe to you, to you show show, show them, them. Show them for to you, the 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 side, the thing that he said that for if the miracle that occur occur in you have oh occurred in time and that the they the, the would have written with it long of a group in circle and and uh, ashes and ashes never never dead nevertheless nevertheless I say to you, it will be more tolerable for time and Sardin or the day of ju ju judgment, judgment <coughs> than for you and you come <coughs> If it will not be exalted to even will you your you you, <coughs> you will be for from 
down to Hades. To Hades. be brought down to Hades. Down to Hades. For he there. Da miracles. 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 That occurred in you. Had occurred in Sodom. So that it, it would have remain, remained to this day. Never, nevertheless, I say to you that it will be more to to reward for for the land. Of Sodom on the on that day of judgment, then for you. Matthew eleven twenty mm -hmm. twenty chapter. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it would have been better. He said, "Had I done this many miracles in Sodom?" or entire, some would have repented. And you guys? Yeah. So it'd be more tolerable in the final day of judgment for Sodom and Tyre and Sidon than it is. <coughs> and this he's saying to the um, Hebrew nation, to those Pharisees, Sadducees, teachers, priests that were there. But to all those who believe in the kingdom of heaven is given this. At the time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent, and hast revealed them into the babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me, my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Mm -hmm. Matthew eleven twenty five to 27. <clears throat> now, did you catch that? The wise, the proud, the arrogant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. have a much less chance because they trust in their own wisdom mm -hmm. their own pride and their own um, desires I'm going to do it my way I am the ultimate authority and that was the case for most of the Pharisees and the Sadducees mm -hmm. They even at times came together and they were totally different. You're taking the absolute opposite conservative over here who doesn't even believe in resurrection and you're taking a far liberal group that's making up all of these laws and you've got the Pharisees and the Sadducees. But the one thing they came together on was to attack Jesus and to try to take him down. So, um, to them he calls forth, to all those who are going to believe, all those, this is what he said. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 to 30. Okay. So we're moving then forward at this point to uh, where, okay, he's proven he's the king through multiple different ways. He's shown the rejection of the king. And um, in fact, in chapter 12, it, it, it even comes to the point where his family come and call him crazy. 
Thus mm -hmm. we move forward to where Jesus reveals the kingdom of heaven to those who have eyes to see and ears to hear. Not before he is fully rejected by the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and even his own family call him crazy. This leads us forward to chapter 13, where he begins to preach in parables. And I want to concentrate much of the remaining teaching to the parables of the sower. All of the rest of this was merely an introduction <clears throat> to give context and meaning to what we must focus on now. So the kingdom of heaven taught through parables. The same day when Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together in Japan, so that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Matthew 13, Matthew 2. Yeah. So there was a huge crowd gathering, so big that he got up on the ship so he could teach. But also, he recognized that some of these came with skepticism, knowing that they wouldn't believe. They just wanted to see this spectacle, right? Some came seeking miracles, and they wanted miracles only. Many came bringing all their own trials and desires to which they clung tightly, and I'm not gonna let go of this or that or anything else, <clears throat> but I wanna come here. Mm -hmm. And a few came completely void of themselves, wanting to surrender and to follow him. Therefore, he spoke in miracles, in parables. Why would that be? If you don't, <clears throat> he's going to explain it further here, but also if you not there to really follow him, you're going to get bored and leave. Mm -hmm. He ends up left with only the, the close disciples mm -hmm. at the end. And he spoke many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow, and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside. Mm -hmm. And the fowls came and devoured them. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up, because they had no deep, deepness of earth, and when the sun was up, they were scorched. And the, because they had not no root, they withered away. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold. Some thirty fold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Matthew 13, 3 through 9. So why would you teach the kingdom of heaven in parables? That's the same question asked by the disciples then. And the disciples came and said unto them, <coughs> Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whoever hath not, from him shall be taken away that he hath, yes. even that he hath. Matthew 13, 10 through 12. Yeah, they really didn't understand either. I mean, they really didn't understand the parable much better than the rest, but he's going to explain it to them. That's the difference once the crowd says, hey, get him out of here. Mm -hmm. However, once the crowd seeking other things dispersed, he would teach those who really were seeking him the truth. Others would leave annoyed. Some came for a miracle and got a story instead. And the one what I wanted. Others came and wanted to be a part of the crowd thing, very excited, but also left when he gave them stories. One what they wanted. Some were just annoyed or bothered by the storytelling itself. It's a way to weed out the crowd to those who really wanted to know the truth and to know Jesus. And a further explanation. Therefore speak, therefore speak I to them in parables, because they are seeking, they are seeing not, seeing, seeing not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled, fulfilled the prophecy of 
Who's that? Isaiah. 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 Actually, that's just a different spelling for Isaiah. Yeah. Isaiah. By hearing ye shall be hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are, are dull of hearing, and their eyes are closed. He said, any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I shall heal them. Matthew 13, 13. Yeah. And their eyes, they have closed. Mm -hmm. Gather that. Though these are those whose hearts are already hardened because they choose not to see the things of God. Mm -hmm. God lets them continue in their hardness, and even he says, I even further hardened their hearts because they, <coughs> they weren't going to listen. They weren't going to hear. And so he let them have what they wanted. Mm -hmm. Romans 1 says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shewed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imitations and imaginations, and their foolish hearts are darkened, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Romans 1, 18 through 22. Yeah, so in their own prideful self-deceit, they chose not to seek any truth apart from themselves, even though God revealed it in everything around them, inside them, and in the world itself. Yet, they chose not to. It's like the Pharisees and the Sadducees are such perfect pictures of it because Matthew's saying, hey, all these things, <clears throat> all the way down even to the resurrection, when they knew the resurrection had actually occurred, what did they do? They paid the guards to tell a lie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They knew at that point, and yet they didn't care. They were so hardened in their hearts. In, meanwhile, his true disciples knew they were sinners. They knew they didn't deserve salvation. They were sinners in need of a savior. Truth could only be found following the master, so to hit them, he said, But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see, and have not seen them, <coughs> and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. Matthew 13, 16, and 17. Yeah. So what is the parable of the solar so we're really me. Jesus then explains. In Mark 4.13, Jesus explained that what the sower is, and that because it was so brief, I just went ahead and wrote it out. Um, he explains that the sower is sowing is the word of God, the truth. It's the gospel message. It's the word of God. Remember, Jesus is also the word of God. And so that what we're sowing, all sowers, is the word. So what the seed that the sower sows is the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. All the soils are that, just soil. And the soil itself is not what is bad. Okay? The soil is soil. It's just dirt. But some of the soil is hardened and impenetrable unless it is tilled first. Some are nice and soft on top, but underneath is a layer of rocks, which would need to be chipped away before usable. Those rocks would have to be dug out, or the soil will never work. Others may be filled with thorns and weeds, which have not been properly removed before the seed falls on it. So the soil itself 
It's just soil. The difference is, is it got hardened and needs tilling? Does it have a layer of rock underneath that needs to be chipped away? Or is it full of thorns that are going to grow up and choke everything? That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Easy to understand. Mm -hmm. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. Matthew 13, 19. Okay, this is the seed that fell on hard ground. Mm -hmm. It's a heart so hardened and embittered against God that no seed can penetrate that heart. No matter how many times you tell them about Christ, they are not going to hear. They don't want to hear. They're not going to hear. They are set and determined. And unless a miracle tills that soil, they can't be saved. For those individuals, we must pray that God till those hearts. And what about those who seem to start to follow? But he that received the seed unto stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet he hath not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, but because of the word, by and by he is offended. Matthew 19, 20, 21. Now, this is the one who with great emotion and joy, they come bounding down, yes, proclaim, yes, I want to accept Christ, yes, yes. They may look the most brilliant in their initial growth, fat, higher, faster, and they're looking and go, wow, okay. They may even run to be baptized, join the church. By all outward appearances, they have been saved. However, there's no root. They really didn't want to surrender to Christ. Maybe they came because they what he might could give them. Oh, good idea. You'll get me that new job. You'll give me that relationship. Or there is no root. This is like the branch grafted into the vine that we that's read about in um John 15, where Jesus is the vine and they are branches. And this is like, a, okay, it, it's, graft, it's not fully grafted in. It's not actually grafted in. It's not getting any of the nutrient from the vine. It's just there hanging out. When things do not happen as they so desire, they're gone. They're out of there. If that job or relationship fails, well, they're gone. Another example that appeared to be saved, but are not, is the own, those sown among thorns. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word. And the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches Choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. Matthew nineteen twenty two. Now, one example of this, and I thought to make it a little bit easier to understand. Okay, a good example would be perhaps somebody who grew up in the church. They spent their whole life in the church. They thought they were Christian simply because of their affiliation, their closeness. They're just kind of hanging out there. They, they accept, kind of, again, a little more superficially. By all counts, they proclaim themselves Christians. On the outside, all looked good until maybe they left for college, began a new career, found a relationship, fell in love, and went bouncing off down a different road. Perhaps life just did not go as they planned. So they're choked away by the cares of this world. The cares of this world could be that money became more important. Career became more important. Relationships became more important. 
but there never was any root, not truly. It was just kind of hanging there, but it was choked by the cares of this world, whether they be good cares, bad cares, sorrow, or joy. But they got choked away. They were never really one Jesus Christ. There was never any firm foundation in Jesus Christ. They played the part well until they were not. <clears throat> then their true heart itself showed. The true Christ follower guaranteed the kingdom of heaven, however, is the next one. Love ye that receive seek and keep that of God is peace is he that reach the earth verse the the Lord and and this understand that is that is he reach also reach the earth the earth and and begin and bring it and begins begin follows some and and this hundredfold and this fold some sixty sixty some and thirty might be thirty so, who are the fruit? They're going to bear fruit. You shall know them by their fruit. There's going to be some fruit. I mean, that may be seasons in which it's a little drier, a little less, maybe not. But there will be definite fruit. Did not Jesus say, I am the, the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. John 15, uh, 1 to 2. Yeah. So he purges it. Uh, yeah. I need a lot of purging. I need a lot of cleaning up, a little snipping here, a little snipping there, clean this, push this, so that I could bear more fruit. But the branch that bears none, he casts aside. Because it really wasn't a branch. It was just a dead piece hanging there. Okay. So how do I know if I am a believer? Number one, knowing I am incapable of my own righteousness, I surrender life and soul to Jesus. Number two, I will bear fruit, maybe less or more at times. But there will be some sign of fruit. And what is the fruit of the Spirit? Love. Joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, <laughs> meekness, and temperance. That is the fruit that we are to bear. Is there any sign of, number three, is there any sign of growth? Do I long to know him more today than yesterday? Am I any closer to him today than I was 65 years ago? when I first accepted. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I wonder through that pathway, I was sometimes more closer at age five than I am, have been during that pathway. But at the same token, there has been that constant movement, that constant pruning. He said, okay, you go in that road, let me help you. Mm -hmm. And he brings me back mm -hmm. and he picks me up and he drags me out of the mud puddle that I've gotten myself in and he says let's go you got work to do he brings me back to my knees to Jesus Christ each and every time number four can I answer honestly as did the apostles when asked if they too would walk away mm -hmm. then said Jesus unto the twelve will you also go away then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom, to whom shall we go? Thou, art, thou hast the words of eternal life, 
when we believe and are sure that thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. John 6, 67 and 69. That gets the final question. <coughs> yes. Do you know him as Lord and Savior? Have you ever truly surrendered your heart to him? If not, it's not too late. We always say today is the day of salvation. And anyone who doesn't know him can turn to him before. To turn to him, your eyes may have been too blind to see or your heart too hardened to ever bow to him. Turn to him before that happens. Because there comes a day when your eyes are too blind and your heart too hard and will never bow. So, dear Heavenly Father, as we close out, make sir, it help us to understand which type of soil we have been and help us to grow in you, grow in faith, grow in love. Guide us each step of the way. And if there be anyone that happens to come to listen even to the tape of this that doesn't know you, Lord. Help them to see you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, between you and God, I think I'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's, it's pretty clear when you do the... the yeah, well, you make it so easy to understand. You really do. I was just telling them before you got in here. <laughs> when you leave, I'm out of here. So, so I said, no. continue, I said. There you go. There you go. Uh -huh. I'm number two. <laughs> so, I, when I ain't going my way, I'm gone. You know, I'm one of those. No, but, but, I, but you work, thought that. Right? Wait a minute. You thought that when I came in. Yes, I guess. And who do you hang with the most? Right. But it's like, yeah. Whenever, you whenever, thought that. Whenever so, I have pleasure. so what you have to do is trust that God is going to bring you the teacher yes. that you need next along yes. this journey. That's I have true. changed which pastors I listen to has changed through the years. It depends upon which one I'm meeting at this stage or this point in my growth. And Who is it that's, that's going to feed me what I need now? And God knows which one to do. And he knows which one to see. He leads you to the right one. Yeah.